Hey, Pumpkin, what's going on? Well, it's uh, 2021, November 5th. Sure is. It's about 5 p.m. in the afternoon, and um, I thought we would try to figure out how to make the world's smallest streaming PC. What? Hey there, I just want to let you know that this isn't an instructional video like our normal tutorials. It's just us having a little bit of fun trying to create the world's smallest streaming PC, or what we claim is. Uh, it doesn't actually meet any of our vMix recommendations, but if you do want to know what PC or laptop to get, check out our website for all that information. And if you want to stick around and check out the journey with us, feel free to keep watching. This here is absolutely Where are tiny. You? Oh, AliExpress, you know. Where else would you be where for quality, PC parts? Where quality PC parts are made. So 62 millimeters has a whopping big Celeron processor, but a base clock speed of two gigahertz. Eight gigs of RAM, which is massive, and it may come with Windows 10 or Linux. Who knows? That's the beauty of AliExpress. AliExpress. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna get a mini monitor, we're gonna run vMix, we're gonna be good to go. We can do a full 720 stream. Yes. <laughs> it does have a, uh, UHD 600 graphics card, so it's gonna be quick. It's a week later and we're still building the world's smallest streaming PC. So what did we get up to this week, Keith? We started with the smallest PC. Now it's time to get the smallest monitor to go with it. So we went hunting for a small 720p monitor. All right, here I am at my personal computer or PC as many people like to call them. And we've found a Feel World S55, which is a 5.5 inch, huge screen, HDMI monitor. And most importantly, it's got a native resolution of 1280 by 720. Now 1280 by 720 just happens to be the minimum resolution recommended for vMix. So it should be well suited for our streaming PC. Hey, what have we got? Ah, uh, it's the keyboard that we may or may not use because it may or may not work. Ultra thin is an attitude. Very small. Wonder if it'll work. So on closer inspection, we realized that the keyboard was not indeed a Bluetooth keyboard. Uh, I didn't buy it personally. I'm not going to name names who bought it. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, we needed to buy a Bluetooth keyboard. So I've gone on Amazon here and we're going to select the Fosman Bluetooth keyboard, which has an amazing trackpad as well, which allows us to have the keyboard and a mouse all in one combo on this tiny little contraption. All right. Are you still vaccinated? Thanks, Amazon. Look at that. No, look at me. <laughs> look at me. Ooh, looks like we've got our mini PC. Well, it tells us what it is. Very small. Nice. Do, 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 do. Wow. It's foam. Looks kind of nice. It's here. Oh, it's actually really, really light. Feel how light it is. Wow. That's light, right? That is incredibly light. So once we got the PC and the monitor, we kind of realized that not only are we going to be able to achieve the smallest streaming PC in the world, but we think we're going to be able to achieve the lightest as well. So I've got some scales here. I'll get them ready and we'll put them on. And what we're talking looks kind of nice. It's 333 gram, not bad. We think we have all the parts to build the world's smallest slash lightest streaming PC. So we thought we'd quickly go over a recap. So we've got our tiny little PC and we pair that with a tiny little monitor and they weigh in at a whopping 333 grams and then a tiny Bluetooth keyboard so that we're not using up any of those USB ports. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the dimensions of the world's smallest streaming PC setup. Our Windows 10 PC is just 0.000161 meters cubed. Our monitor is 0.000341 meters cubed. And our keyboard is 0.000145 meters cubed. So that comes together to be 0.000648 meters cubed, which is just a bit more than a 600 mil bottle of your favorite beverage. So now we're gonna try and see if we can actually plug it all in and work it all out and fire up Windows. Here, computer. So we need to plug everything in. Roll and roll. Looks kind of nice. Looks kind of nice. So we plugged everything in and because this is a Bluetooth device, we can't quite use it yet because we need to set up Windows first. So thanks to the two USB ports that are connected on our little tiny PC, we've been able to connect up these two USB devices, the mouse and keyboard, so that we can set up Windows. 
Now also, we've connected a pass-through HDMI cable on this side of the monitor that's allowed us to send a pass-through HDMI to an NDI converter that sends the signal out so that you can see what we're doing. All right, moment of truth. Now we're going to try and turn this PC on. What do you reckon is gonna work or not? 50-50. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and uh, turn the PC on right now. Good luck. Do you hear that fan? Fan started up? Whisper okay. quiet. That's that's a good start. You know what's gonna help? If we turn on the monitor. Uh-huh, that'll get you. Did that turn on the monitor? <laughs> Is the monitor plugged in? Uh, yeah. Do we have to hold it down Maybe, perhaps? let's hold it down for a little. We have... Okay. <laughs> we didn't talk about whether we th thought the monitor would work or not. When I said 50-50, I meant that one of them would turn on and one ah, wouldn't. Ah, gotcha. Now we're going to troubleshoot this. <laughs> Are you going to explain what you did? Uh, no. <laughs> you may notice that the power cable is now plugged into a different the... part of the, uh, the device, which is where the power is supposed to go. So, so not only does this monitor have HDMI pass-through, but it has power pass-through, which is kind of clever. But we were trying to put the power into the wrong side, or I was. Yep, so that's all set up now. The PC's spinning away, so let's go ahead and fire up the... Monitor. Monitor. Do it work? Hey! hey we're away. Oh, we are away. Nice. So the great thing is, is that we have the pass-through for the monitor now coming into vMix. So we've actually got a full screen recording. So it's going out the screen into NDI and we're recording that. Let's get oh, setting up. So yes, let's start setting all this up. Uh, do we want it in English or something else? Let's pick a name. What's a good name? Trevor. Is, is that a good name? Hey, oh. hi. It's looking good. Hey, hey, we've got Windows. That's Windows. Very exciting. Yeah, all right. So now we need to set up our Bluetooth keyboard. keyboard. So right. Heath's an expert at that. Add a Bluetooth device and add a Bluetooth device. Um, Do you think, is it close enough? Should we put it closer <laughs> to the thing? Hold it really close. Uh, it's not flashing or anything. So um, maybe we need to hold down the Bluetooth icon. All right. Done. I think we might have a connected keyboard. Here we go. First test. Looks kind of nice. Oh, hey. Hey. Look at that. We can just type something in, see if the keyboard works. Sure. Uh, Trevor. Trevor. Hey. Oh, it's pre-filling it for you and everything. Oh, it knows all about Trevor. Success. Right. We can stop now. That's it, right? Well, we've got to install vMix. Ah, true. All right. So now that we uh, have the Bluetooth connected, we realized that we needed to also plug in the network. Oh, there we go. We are going to install vMix. <gasps> yes. All right. Type in the key. Close your eyes, everybody. Heath's going to spend the next 15 minutes <laughs> typing in this key. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. This is it. We've done it. Thanks for watching this video. That's it. <laughs> I do not want you to see anything we after are this point. Done. Look at that CPU usage. Barely anything. It's not a live stream without a camera, obviously. So what we've done is we found the smallest camera that we have in our office, which is this, this little uh, guy right here, Marshall camera. And we're going to use HDMI and then we're going to plug this into a major USB converter. Well, you plug that in. I'll plug in the HDMI leads. Yes. I think we're ready to add this camera into our vMix production. That is. And USB capture device, here it is. And we'll leave it at 1280 by 720 because that's um, about the limits that we think this PC will handle. So let's go OK. And there we go. We have a camera. Input again. Click on title slash XAML. Type something What would you be like here? Uh, world's smallest streaming PC. <laughs> Close it down. Overlay it. Let's do it. Straight into overlay. Boom. Look at that. There we go. Seamless. Very nice. Production's not going to be complete without a stream deck. So we have two USB ports. So we can one have one for the stream deck and we've got a capture device as well. So we're going to do that now. We need to set up a shortcut for that, obviously. Do we? So I've got the stream deck here, the stream deck mini. I'm going to plug this in. Oh, very good. To the world's lightest and smallest streaming PC. Kind of makes sense. The smallest oh, God, like six button six button controller. Mm. Pretty nice and tiny. Sign me up. Trevor. 
No, Trevor. No, Trevor, no. Go up to find. And hey, while you're go. holding that down, I'll click OK. Always. Now that we've added our shortcut, uh, I'm going to press the button and we'll see what happens. This Let's will remove it because it it's toggled. Mm. So we'll remove it. There we yeah. go. Boom. Very nice. And we're on. That. Very good. Boom. On and off. Boom. All right, what's next? Uh, we've got we need to add a video show. file. So let's <laughs> okay. go find a video file. So we've just realized uh, that we have the ability to use an SD card, a micro SD, in the mini PC. So we're going to be able to use this, put a video file and an image file on here that we can use in our production. So I could select this and drag that and then drag them onto the desktop. Sure. Booyah. Business. So now we have multiple files in here. Let's Very cut good. to this guy. Look at this. And we have this amazing video. So it is the next morning. And so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, update the PC, try and squeeze as much juice out of the turnip. He's in traffic. So I'm going to sit here for the next few hours and update it all. I'm going to grab my trusty, amazing keyboard, which I love and uh, update it now. Ooh, there's a few that we might need to install. Let's go ahead and install those. Yeah, this could take a while. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to leave this to go. So it's day two now for setting up the Trevor mini PC. And so what we did last night, um, we did some tests and we decided to make sure that we should update Windows, update the drivers and make sure all of the display and uh, inputs and everything were at 720. Yes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make the production look a whole lot better. We don't like the way this camera looks. Um, it's not great. It's not the world's smallest camera. We're talking about the PC here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the Ursa that we use for our tutorials, this one right here. And we're going to be using that in our production. So this is our tutorial camera, the Ursa Mini, and we've also got embedded audio there. So what we're gonna do is connect this second SDI in, and we're gonna take that second feed, take it across into this device here, which converts from SDI to HDMI. So I'll unplug this from our camera, and now we're gonna take from the Ursa instead. So I'll plug that in there. That goes via HDMI into our Magewell capture card that converts from HDMI to USB. And then from USB, we're going to Trevor. So we'll have our Ursa Mini and our embedded audio. Okay, so now we've routed the Ursa Mini through our mini PC so that you can get a better picture quality. And we've also included embedded audio using our shotgun microphone. We've also added a couple of new inputs just to sort of jazz up our stream a little bit. And so now it's time to start streaming. I will go to settings first and show you what our stream setup looks like. We've got a 720p stream at 2.5 megabits per second. So nice high quality for a 720 stream. I'll hit save and close. Are you ready to stream, Tim? I am. Ready as I'll ever be. Let's do this. It's our first ever stream. First ever stream by Trevor. All right, so we should be streaming now. We're streaming. Now, if you want to check, uh, right. Keith's got his YouTube page open on the laptop here. And so you'll be able to see the stream coming through. And once he enables the audio, you should be able to hear the audio from the stream. I'll turn it on in here. And here we are. So now we're on a slight delay on the live stream, but we are now on, let's have a moment silence and listen to ourselves. Maybe we should clap. Maybe we should clap. There we go, we're live streaming. Now we're currently sitting at what? 41% CPU total with 7% in vMix. Wow, amazing. Mm, not too bad. Our render times are sitting sort of under 10 milliseconds, which is great. Um, it's looking yeah. good. What a great first test stream. Yes, the first stream we ever did. Yeah. Can't nailed believe it. it. We've done nailed it. it. We are back from a very big night of celebrating our first ever live stream with Trevor. We're really excited. We've come back today. We thought we would add a couple of elements to the production. So I've gone ahead and added a new title and I've added an NDI source. So we've hooked up the mini PC to our network. Probably um, not a great idea, but that's what we've done. And so we've now brought in the petrol cam that you can see in the production. We've got the picture in picture with the petrol cam and the um, our normal camera. So we thought we would do another stream just demonstrating these elements as well. So um, go ahead and hit that stream button. Let's do this. So I'll go down to stream and 
We'll wait for that to kick into gear. Now I've got my laptop here again, like last time, so I can monitor the stream coming into YouTube. All right, so let's go ahead and- All right, uh, it is starting to turn up now. And now I'm going to unmute it. Here we go. We've got this one. We've got our camera here. We've got our double box here. Very and throw nice. up the petrol cam. Very nice. Let's uh, put our title wow. there. Dance it up. Let's bring it back here. Send it back. And there you go. We got an amazing production with our stream deck and our mini PC here. We did it. We did it indeed. Let's throw up our we did it. There we go. We, we did, did it. it. We know what we're doing. <laughs> we're amazing. So we're, uh, we're very excited. So that's our streaming PC off the shelf, tiny PC that we bought. Uh, we didn't have to, we didn't tweak it. We can't really tweak it as you know, at all. We've just updated windows, the drivers, shrunk everything down to 720 so that that will work properly. And uh, we're pretty excited that we actually managed to get it to work. So now we're going to take some uh, time to do some quiet reflection and think about this whole experience. And then um, we're going to give you some final words about our whole um, mini PC build. We started with a dream, a dream to create the world's smallest streaming PC, and that dream it grew. Actually, it shrunk. It shrunk down. We wanted it to be small and light. And I really think Trevor delivered on that. Look, he doesn't quite pack a punch, but he certainly packs a pinch. This video was about having a little fun, quite literally. Now, although we say we had a big dream, it really was a little dream of creating a slightly functional streaming PC that I could fit into my pocket. Now, we also wanted the PC to have a certain je ne sais quoi, if you will. And it was very important that it was also highly rated on the Trevor scale, which is the universally accepted unit of measurement for this type of performance of non-recommended vMix PCs. Trevor stands for True Relative Efficiency Value of R, where R is size times performance to the power of live streaming. And this is a per dollar unit. We were pretty happy with the score that our mini PC got, which was a 17. Although we didn't have a budget per se, we wanted to keep our costs nice and low. So we ended up with a PC that cost us $260, the monitor was $140, and the keyboard cost us $40. Now, look, that sounds like good value for a bit of barely functional equipment, but there are better options out there. I would recommend looking at laptops that have at least the recommended specs on our website. Tim, would you recommend doing this? Would I recommend doing this? Oh, absolutely not. Do not do this. Uh, we set out for our own curiosity just to see how small we could make a slightly functional streaming PC. And we think we got it pretty small to make a really short YouTube stream. However, I would not recommend doing this. If you were looking for a vMix PC or a laptop, check out our reference systems page where we've gone through and we've tested it out. And you can get some really awesome laptops that will do great video production for just a little bit more than what Trevor cost us. When we first saw Trevor, we were pretty amazed. He had two USB ports, micro SD, full-size HDMI, Ethernet, and a quad-core processor. Sounded good on paper. However, he had only a two gigahertz processor and a UHD 600 graphics card, which is below minimum spec. So we do not recommend doing this with vMix. However, we had a lot of fun, I must admit. You know, I'm really gonna miss working with Trevor. Making this video, we've become really great mates, but I feel like it's time to move on. And he really does make a great coaster. Well, what a journey. Our big dream became a small dream, and now that dream is over. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching, and we'll stream you later. later.